Hey friends, how's it going? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be doing a book unhaul because you know we are getting closer to fall and I thought there's nothing better than to kick off the new season with like a spring cleaning you know I went through my bookshelves and I found so many different books that I either recently read that I didn't really enjoy maybe I dnf'd it maybe it's just been sitting on my shelves for like literally forever and I just don't think I'm ever gonna get to it I don't even want to guess how many books are surrounding me I have four pretty high stacks of books. And today we're just gonna go through all the books that I'm gonna be unhauling. In the year of 2024, as you might have noticed, I've gotten a lot more like cutthroat, I guess, when it comes to like DNFing books that I'm not enjoying. I'm really just trying to improve my reading year in general and not waste time reading books that I'm not enjoying. And then with that, I'm also trying to get rid of books that I'm also not enjoying or even books that I enjoyed that I read a number of years ago that I just don't see myself ever coming back to it. I usually do get questions about like, well, what do you do with the book? books that you unhaul in these kinds of videos. And I have a number of different places that I take these books after I do these unhauls. I'm really fortunate that in my area, there are a ton of little free libraries. So those are especially useful to put books that are like ARC copies that you can't really like sell anywhere else. I do utilize my little free libraries. I do have some in real life friends who do read that I pass on these books to. I also do donate books to like Value Village or Goodwill, or there's a lot of like used bookstores in my area that'll take books. Sometimes my library will also take book donations. And then there's also like half price books where sometimes I'll take some of these to sell to half price books. I know some people use Pango to like resell their books. There's an app called Pango where you can like resell your books. And I know I've heard from so many other people that there are so many different places where you can donate your books. Like I know some people say you can donate books to schools. And then I think you can also donate books to different like shelters as well. Those are just some ideas. So if you would like to let me know where you typically donate your books then you can let me know down in the comments below if you're looking for some more ideas. But yeah, let's just jump right into it because there's a lot to get through. This first little stack of books that I'm gonna be unhauling are all books that I have DNF'd very recently, including uh, The Game Changer. This one, unfortunately, is a romance that I ended up DNFing pretty early on because I do not like the uh, childhood friends to lovers trope. I am just not into it. And it just like really makes me cringe when he keeps referring to her as like a kid and they're supposed to be like romantically involved. Like I just couldn't get on board with this. I also think, oh my God, I think it's time for me to unhaul Sharks in the Time of Saviors. I've actually tried to read this book like maybe two or three different times now. And for some reason, I just can't get into it. But I really wanted to love this because I'm really obsessed with this cover personally and I love the colors of this and I know that's such a shallow reason to try to keep a book for so long. But I also wanted to keep it because it takes place in the year of 1995 and I thought that was so cool because you know that's the year that I was born. Damn I just I can't get into this one and I gotta stop lying to myself like eventually one day I'll read it. Like no it's not gonna happen. I'm also gonna be getting rid of like mother like daughter. This is a new thriller that I got a little bit less than 100 pages into and it was just so boring. Like it was so incredibly boring and I've heard from so many people that it never gets better and that the reveals are like not even that interesting so I'm not gonna waste my time with this. I also recently DNF'd Wilderness Reforms and The Pairing. The Pairing I honestly should have read a little bit more of that premise to see what this one's about because I'm really not interested in like a sexual competition of like who can sleep with the tour guide first. Like, I'm sorry I'm not interested in reading that so this one was a DNF for me. This one just felt so slow moving especially at the beginning. I just didn't really care about this camp or like what was going on with this young boy. I found the characters to be kind of like immediately annoying. So that was a bad sign to me. So I DNF this one and unfortunately I'm going to be getting rid of it because oh, dude this cover is stunning. It's so beautiful and that's why it sucks to have to get rid of this one, but like I can't I'm sorry Some manga that I'm gonna be unhauling actually is gonna include Death Note volume 2 and Alice in Borderland volume 7 I know with manga it's so complicated right because like as a collector of a series It's like you want to keep every single volume in the series, right? But for me, I don't see any point in holding on to specific volumes in the series that I did not enjoy And because to be fair with both of these series like I don't own every single volume in the series. I think with Alice in Borderland especially, like I only own volumes like four, five, six, and seven or something like that. So I only own some of them that are in the middle of the series anyway. So I utilize my library a lot to read manga. And so I don't really see any point in holding on to these. But I guess my question to you, I am curious if you're somebody who does like collect manga series, do you usually hang on to the ones that you don't enjoy as much? 
if it's like in the middle of the series. <laughs> I'm just curious. I would just love to know. Two books that I recently just read for the reading Reese Witherspoon's book club picks that I'm gonna be unhauling include How to End a Love Story as well as The Unwedding. But I was really looking forward to both of these books this year and it really sucks that both of these ended up being two star books for me. I just really found it hard to root for the relationship and How to End a Love Story because of the way that these characters know each other. Like the history that they share is a little bit like, ooh. And then same with like The Unwedding. I feel like this one actually had a lot of potential to be interesting, but it was just not interesting. Oh my gosh. And some of the reveals at the end were so obvious and predictable to me. I'm sadly going to be getting rid of my copy of The Watchers. This is a horror book that I read recently that I did end up giving this one like three stars. Like it wasn't a terrible read, but I think I just expected so much more from this. Like I really thought that this one was going to be a new favorite and it was just so mid in my opinion, and just very forgettable. Oh, this next one is devastating because it's a novel love story by Ashley Poston. This was arguably like one of my top most anticipated books of this whole year because it's Ashley Poston and it really like breaks my heart and it was devastating that this was only two stars for me. Like I really did not like this one. I just thought it was so repetitive and I just could not get on board with the romance in this. Like they just had no chemistry. So sadly, oh, this one was a two star, but you know, I'm seeing so many people who typically do like Ashley Poston are not really liking this one either. So I know that it's not just me, but it's still devastating that it has to happen, you know, because this is such a beautiful cover. Oh my God, it's stunning. Some mystery thriller and kind of horror stuff that I've tried to read this year that I'm gonna be unhauling includes Bad Taurus. This is one that's a thriller that I thought would be so fun. I was actually trying to read this during Summerween and I got a hundred pages in. I still have my little bookmark in here. And this one, unfortunately, it just was not that interesting. I just expected to care so much more by the time I was a hundred pages in like I expect to feel invested by that point and I just really did not feel invested in a single character in this story. Another one that I'm going to be unhauling is A Talent for Murder by Peter Swanson which this is also devastating because this is technically the third book in the series of The Kind Worth Killing by this author and that series the first two books in that series were both five stars for me like some of my favorite thrillers of all time so the fact that this one was such a huge letdown for me oh my god I can't even express how disappointed I was by this book so I can't even look at it anymore like this cannot exist on my shelves <laughs> because it's a reminder of the pain. I'm also going to be unhauling You Know What You Did. This is a thriller that I read earlier this year that I gave around like three stars. It wasn't the worst, but it just wasn't very memorable either. And then another thriller that I gave three stars was One Perfect Couple by Ruth Ware. This one, it sucks that I gave it three stars though because I feel like this book had so much potential at the beginning and like the idea of it is so cool. Like I love the idea of like a dating reality show meets like a survivor type of show where they're all like straight it on an island. I thought it was such a fun premise, but then it just got so repetitive and like so boring. Also going to be unhauling The Gathering by CJ Tudor, which again, this was another three star. This one was fine. There was nothing really wrong with it. I just didn't like the fact that there were like way too many characters. And in my opinion, it read a little bit too much like detective fiction, which felt very like clinical and kind of boring. But I do love the vampire elements in this and like the fact that it takes place in Alaska and it's very like isolated, like stormy Alaskan winter vibe. Vibes. Like it was great atmosphere. The story itself just like didn't really wow me and didn't really stick with me. I'm also going to be unhauling Mother Daughter Murder Night. This was a book that I actually read with my mom for a dedicated video. We both buddy read this together for a vlog that was like reading Mother Daughter Murder Night with my mother. And it was really fun and it was really cute. And I'm so glad that we did that vlog. But I also think there's no real reason for me to hang on to this book because it only ended up being about a three star for me. It was cute, but it was also kind of like forgettable. I don't know. I think this kind of falls into the more like cozy mystery genre and I just don't know if that's like my genre you know like I don't know if I really enjoy a lot of cozy mysteries and then oh, sadly I do think I'm gonna be unhauling my copy of horror movie by Paul Tremblay even though this sucks because I did go like out of my way to try to find the cool like red sprayed edges and the cool like end papers like the special edition version you know that they had at Barnes and Noble I paid like $30 for this hard copy <laughs> because it was like the cool exclusive thing but unfortunately I don't think I'm gonna hang on to this because like I did end up giving this one three stars. Like it wasn't a bad book, but I just don't really see myself recommending this one a lot. And I don't see myself ever coming back to this and like wanting to reread it again. So I just really don't see a reason for this to like take up space on my shelves. Oh, I'm so torn to keep it just because it's such a beautiful copy and like the red sprayed edges. Are you kidding?
kidding me? And then sadly, I think I'm also gonna be unhauling No Road Home by John Fram because this is a book that I tried to read this summer. I got about like 60 pages into this book and I feel like this horror book, it had a lot of like very heavy religious themes at the beginning of it and I just know myself and I'm not the biggest fan of like religious horror and I just really don't think that this is gonna end up being something that I enjoy and so instead of leaving a negative review, I think I'm just gonna leave it at a DNF and I'm gonna pass this on to somebody else that might really enjoy this. All right, and then some more thriller horror things that I've read this year. One of them is The Bell Chime. This was a horror novella that I was literally so excited for. And I think I ended up giving this one one star. Like I absolutely hated this. I thought it had so much potential to be interesting. And then the second half of this book, I was just like, what? Like what is going on? Where's the story going off to? And like, why is it so boring? Even though this novella is only like 150 pages, it still somehow managed to feel like longer than it needed to be. I don't know. I think I just gave this one star because I was freaking pissed because the beginning had so much potential. And I was like, how do you drop the ball this hard? I'm also going to be unhauling First Lie Wins because this is another thriller that is just very popular. Like everybody seems to be just absolutely loving this this year. And I have the unpopular opinion that I just didn't really care for this. I gave this two stars, but also to be fair, I usually don't really like thrillers that involve people that are like spies or like con artists. Those are usually some of my like least favorite tropes in thrillers anyways. Like I just do not care about a con artist and like somebody who's like trying to live a new identity and like start over. I don't know, like those have never been my favorite. So I think that I'm just not the right audience for this book. I'm also gonna be unhauling Where Sleeping Girls Lie. This one is a young adult thriller that I read earlier this year and I was really looking forward to this one because it's the same author as Ace of Spades, which I did really enjoy. This one is another thriller that like I thought it was fine. I think I gave this one like three stars, maybe even like three and a half stars, but I just didn't love it as much as I was expecting to and hoping to. And I do think there's a lot of other readers that could really enjoy this one, so I think I should pass this on. I did work on a reading vlog earlier this year where I read a lot of thrillers that involved like mixed media and things like that. And in that vlog, I tried to read Murder in the Family as well as True Crime Story. Unfortunately for me, Murder in the Family ended up being a DNF. I think I only got like a hundred, maybe even like 150 pages into this before I DNF'd it. This book was cool in a way because it's literally all mixed media. Like there is nothing conventional about the storytelling of this. But for me, it made it so hard to get invested in the story. I just had no idea what was going on. And it was just very hard to follow. And I just was not was not interested in anything that was happening in this. And then True Crime Story is one that I did end up enjoying. I think I gave this like three, maybe three and a half stars. But for me, it was just not very memorable. And if I ever were to come back to this book, I would always recommend this on audio instead of reading this physically. So I just don't see any reason for me personally to hang on to this copy, even though this is a really cool copy because I did find one that was signed at the bookstore. So like somebody else is gonna be very happy, I think, to find this. I'm also gonna be unhauling Untamed Shore by Sylvia Morena Garcia. This is one that like, I don't even know how to describe this. Like, is it a mystery thriller? Kind of, it's kind of like historical fiction. I read this book during one of the reading vlogs I worked on this year. I think it was the backlist bonanza where I had to spin the wheel, pick this book off my backlist for me to read. And it was just fine. Again, there was nothing wrong with this book. It was just not very memorable. I think I gave this one three stars. And then I also did a reading vlog earlier this year. That was another round of like reading some thriller arcs where I read The Chamber by Will Dean. And unfortunately this was like an immediate DNF for me after like 60 pages. Oh my god, it was just so boring. Like the descriptions about this chamber and like them being underwater, it felt like I was reading like a science textbook or something. Like it was just so boring and for what? It is such a bummer though that this one didn't work out, especially after how much I loved the last book that I just read from this author that was called The Last One. And then I think it was in that same reading vlog, I also tried to read I Need You to Read This as well as The Astrology House. And both of these ended up being pretty disappointing for me. I mean, I think this one, I gave this one two stars because I was really upset because I really enjoyed the atmosphere and like the characters in this I thought were really interesting but this thriller was so incredibly predictable in like every single way like there was not one aspect of this book that I was like oh shit that's interesting I counted at the end and there were like four different plot twists at the end and I had guessed every single one of them and I'm not even usually the kind of person that will like sit there and try to like figure out what's going on it was just so obvious like it was so 
obvious. So unfortunately, this did not work for me at all. And then also the astrology house. Oh my God, this one had such potential and it's so upsetting because I literally thought that I was gonna give this book five stars when I was starting it. Oh my God, it just had the best setup. I love the idea of all of these people with all these different astrological signs going to this astrology retreat. I really loved the setup and the way that we would get all of the different characters. Like we would get their little astrological charts throughout the book. I just thought it was so cute. But unfortunately, uh, the ending of this book was just so underwhelming. And I hate that this book became so much more about like the romantic drama and the cheating and all that between the characters instead of anything that was like actually interesting. That's really unfortunate that this one did not work out because I could have seen this one as like one of my favorites of the year. If only it were more interesting. One romance book that I read this year that I really didn't care for too much was The Rom-Commers by Catherine Center. Oh, it's such a bummer because I really wanted to love this one because of how much I loved the bodyguard from this author. But unfortunately, this one just did not work for me. It was mainly because of the love interest, this guy, Charlie. Oh my God, he just drove me absolutely crazy in this book. And I just couldn't root for their romance because of how annoying I found him to be specifically. So this is gonna be an unhaul because I'm sure there are plenty of other readers who would absolutely love this. And I'm just not that audience. So I need to pass this on to somebody else who would love it. And then same with this, oh my gosh, this is like one of the most popular books of this whole year. And everybody and their mom seems to be so obsessed with this book and I'm so happy for them but I personally found this book to be pretty underwhelming and that is The Women by Kristen Hanna. You have no idea how badly I wanted to love this book because I love almost all of Kristen Hanna's books. The Great Alone, The Four Winds, the Nightingale, you know, like she's written some of my favorite historical fiction books of all time. And even though I'm not the biggest historical fiction fan, I usually find something to love about her books. But this book, in my opinion, it was kind of a hot mess. Like there were so many things about this story that I was like, what the heck? Like what? Two different poetry collections that I'm going to be unhauling include Instructions for Traveling West, as well as Falling Back in Love with Being Human. Both of these collections, I thought that they were fine. I think I gave each of them like three stars. They were just okay, but I feel like in order for me to want to hang hang on to a poetry collection, it has to be something that I'm like absolutely blown away by, right? Like it has to be something that's like five stars that I'm gonna want to return to after some time. And I was really like starting to get back into like my poetry era earlier this year, but it was very short lived because I think I only read these. <laughs> and I'm just like trying to find my perfect ideal poetry collection and it hasn't happened yet. And then one young adult book that I'm gonna be unhauling is The Perfect Guy Doesn't Exist by Sophie Gonzalez. And this is one that I was, ugh, I was really looking Looking forward to this because I thought the premise and the idea of it sounded so cute. I thought this could be right up my alley because it involves this young girl who's like a fanfic writer and it says a fanfic writer brings her favorite TV character to life in this friends to enemies to lovers romance and I was like oh my god that sounded so cool. But then as I was starting to read this I realized oh it's actually more of like this friends to lovers romance because it's more about her romance with like the boy next door. It's not even really about the fanfic writer thing. I also think young adults these days. Gosh, it's like, it's so hit or miss for me. I don't know why I keep getting the feeling like I'm too old to be reading this now, which I know is not true. Like, I know that there are plenty of people that are my age that still enjoy reading young adult, and I desperately still want to be reading young adult and enjoying young adult. And I know that these books are written for young adults, you know? So like, I know that it doesn't even feel right to be critiquing it for like feeling too young, because like, yeah, I can't critique it for that reason because I'm not the target audience, you know? So like, I have such a weird like love-hate relationship with young adult these days, but I just, I really thought that this one could be the one for me, but I don't think it is. And so I think I need to pass this on to a young adult who will actually get a lot out of this. I also am gonna be unhauling my copy of Honey, which is a book that I actually recently just hauled, but I did recently try to read this book and I got 128 pages in before I decided to DNF it. I just, I don't know what it is about this. I am not feeling it. This one sounded interesting to me because we're following this character who's like an up and coming pop star in, you know, the nineties. I really thought that this would be fun, but I feel I feel like every time I try to read these books that are about like pop stars or like young actresses, I feel like I never tend to like them. Like I always think it's gonna be something that I'm down for and that I wanna read. And then I just find them to be like really annoying. And then speaking of young pop stars, I also read The Daydreams earlier this year. This was another one that I ended up being super disappointed by, ugh. And this one follows like the stars of this really popular teen show that was like in the early 2000s. And then the story takes place like years and years later when they're gonna be having the reunion and there's like all this drama. But this book was not nearly as dramatic or juicy or interesting as it should have been. Like this book was so boring, why? And then a few romance books that I'm gonna be unhauling 
two of the ones I'm gonna be unhauling were actually DNFs for me. The first one is Unsteady and then I also have Late Bloomer. Both of these books are books that I wanna say I got like 70 to 100 pages into both of these. I think I actually got even further into Unsteady, but oh, this breaks my heart because Unsteady is a book that I was so freaking excited about because like the whole ice skating thing, because we're following this one girl who's an ice skater and then the boy is a hockey player and like that is just like my dream combo right there. Like I love reading about figure skating and I love reading about hockey. So this should have been everything to me. But unfortunately, this is just one of those books where I could not get invested in the characters. And then same with Late Bloomer. There was just something about this book that like immediately just kind of like irritated me. It's about this girl who like wins the lottery and then she decides to buy this flower farm. But it's like weird. There's like some kind of miscommunication where this other girl is like still living on the flower farm. And she's like, you can't just buy this. And she's like, my grandma just like sold it. Now there's like this weird situation where they're both gonna have to live on the flower farm together and I'm like what? Like I don't know the premise of this was immediately like huh? Like that's weird. I just couldn't get into this. I also read The Kiss Countdown earlier this year which like this was really cute. It involves this guy who's an astronaut and it involves some fake dating. It takes place in Houston, Texas. I thought this one was cute. It was fine. It's just not very memorable for me and I don't think it's gonna stay on my romance shelf. I don't know why especially when it comes to romance books. I think I only want to keep the romance that I give five stars because like those romances are ones that I will come back to and like those are the ones that I'm recommending the most and so like if a romance book isn't five stars I struggle to think of a reason to like hang on to it which is the same reason I think I'm gonna unhaul Bride by Allie Hazelwood. I'm really glad that I read this one you know and I'm really glad that I gave it a shot because this one's actually like a paranormal romance which is a little bit like out of my element like not something that I typically read but you know because it's Allie Hazelwood I just wanted to give it a shot because I do tend to like her romances and this was interesting. You know, I think I ended up giving this one around three stars. I didn't dislike it, but I also just don't see any reason for me to hang on to this because I know there are so many readers out there who would love this. And then I'm also going to be unhauling Here We Go Again because unfortunately this was a romance book that I wanted to love and I just did not love it. I did not like the chemistry between these two characters, especially one of the girls. I think it's Logan in this book. Oh my god, like why did she have like the personality of like a 13 year old boy? Like she was so annoying and so obnoxious in this book. But I know there are a ton of romance readers who absolutely love this, so I know that I'm in the minority with this one as well. Some older thrillers that I read a while ago that I did really enjoy, but I think I'm going to unhaul at this point, include The Perfect Child, which, you know, this is one that I did enjoy. I think I gave this one four stars. Stars. I just don't really see myself hanging on to this for much longer anymore. Same with like The Collective. Like this is another one that I did really enjoy. I think I gave this one like four stars when I read it, but it's been so long since I've read it and I don't see myself ever coming back to this. Same with All the Dangerous Things. This is one that I actually really did like, you know, I gave it four stars, but because it's not like a five star all time favorite thriller, I just don't really see any reason for me to hang on to it. And then also The Maid by Nita Prose, another one that I gave four stars that I enjoyed that I just don't see myself revisiting visiting this, I do know that this thriller actually does have a series, which is why I'm also going to be unhauling The Mystery Guest because I did have some curiosity to continue on in the series, which is why I got this book in the first place. Then I got about like 50 pages into this one before I realized like I just don't really have any interest in continuing on with the story. And I think that's the hard part for me about some like thriller series because I'm not a big series reader, you know, and like there's a reason for it. Like I just don't need a series most of the time when I'm reading my thrillers. So I'm gonna be getting rid of both of these. I'm also finally gonna be getting rid of The Dreamers. <laughs> oh, it's so crazy because I first read this book when it came out in like 2019 and I gave it like three stars, I think. I thought it was just okay, but I've literally taken this book with me. Like I've kept it after all these years. I've moved it from apartment to apartment over these last like five years. And I've kept it for so long because I'm obsessed with this cover. Like it is one of my favorite book covers of all time. And I was convinced that if I had reread it again in the future that I would love it. But earlier this year I did try rereading this one and I was still kind of like mm like yeah it's fine I don't know and so I was like oh my god be so for real like I'm never gonna come back to this I just have to accept the fact that this book is just okay but it has like one of the most beautiful covers that I've ever seen in my life like are you kidding me I mean we all know that I'm a sucker for like a night sky on the cover so <laughs> this is my ideal like dream book cover oh my god it's just so beautiful but it's just not for me and I have to be okay with that I'm also gonna be unhauling somebody's daughter as well as dancing at the pity party both of these are memoirs actually they're both like non-fiction 
fiction. This one's actually a memoir that's a graphic novel, which I thought was really freaking cool. And I really did end up enjoying both of these, but I feel like with both of these, like I'm so glad that I read them, but I also don't see any reason for me to hang on to these at the same time. I'm also finally gonna be unhauling Circe, Circe, because this is another one that I read during my backlist bonanza episode. I think I ended up DNFing this one at like 80 pages in. And I'm like, I just have to be so real with myself and realize that Greek mythology is most of the time not my thing. Even if it's like the most hyped, loved book ever in the Greek mythology genre, usually I just read it and it goes in one ear and out the other. Like I just cannot get invested in these books for the life of me. So this is gonna have to be an unhaul because I know so many other readers love this one. I'm also gonna be unhauling Where They Wait by Scott Carson. And this one hurts because this is a horror book that I thought had such great potential. Like this is one that at the end of the day, I ended up giving this only three stars because I thought the ending of this just really, really dropped the ball. But the beginning of this, oh my God, it had such five star potential for me. And I think that's why I've hung on to this book after all these years, because I really, really loved the beginning. I thought it was so fascinating and so interesting, but unfortunately, like I really didn't like the ending of this book. And I think that's why at the end of the day, it was only three stars. And I'm like, I just can't hang on to this anymore because like my my horror shelf over there is getting very crowded and like I need to make room for the books that are four stars and five stars and I just don't have the space to keep this anymore. Okay and then lastly <laughs> the last three books that I'm going to be unhauling are going to be these romance books from Brittany C. Cherry. So Brittany C. Cherry is a romance author that I used to read a ton of her books back in like 2016, 2017 times and that was back when I was you know primarily a romance reader back in those years and these books are just not something that I see myself enjoying if I were to read them now. I don't know for sure. There is a chance that I could read any one of these books right now and still give it five stars. Like, I don't really know, but I just also don't really see myself coming back to these books at any point. I mean, Loving Mr. Daniels is a book that I used to consider, like, to be one of my all-time favorites. But now thinking about it, I'm like, I don't really know if I'm into the whole like student teacher romance thing anymore. And then even with these two books, like I'm just not really sure if I'm this kind of romance reader anymore. So I think it's time that I pass on these books to another romance reader. All right, so those are all of the books that I'm gonna be unhauling today. I know it is so much. It does feel really good though. Like I'm not gonna lie. It feels really great to unhaul books to bring in the new season. You know, I feel like it's something that's necessary. I also like, I am unhauling books all the time. You know, like it's pretty rare for me to film an unhaul video. I know I've done a few this year. It's because people tell me that they really like them. So if you do really like the unhaul videos, then let me know if you want to keep seeing these from me because I know I do like watching unhaul videos as well. Like I like to see what people are choosing to get rid of and why they're choosing to get rid of it. I find it really interesting. You'll have to let me know if you still enjoy watching the unhauls. I feel like I'm always buying new books and I'm always getting new books in the mail that I'm so excited about that like I need the space on my shelves for all these new books that I'm hauling all the time, you know? I'm not even entirely sure like how many books total that I even own. I want to say it's like a little bit less than 500 and I think I'd like to keep it that way, you know? I don't know. I think I get a little bit overwhelmed at the idea of like having too many books because currently like I'm in an apartment, you know, and I know that this is not my forever home. And so like the idea of having to move and like moving a ton of books, like that just does not sound like a fun time to me. And so that's why I think I get especially like I need to keep my collection at like a reasonable number until I'm living in my forever home or at least somewhere where I can see myself living for a very long time and I can start like really collecting books and it'll be fine. But for now, I'm like, I'm living in an apartment, you know, like I need to keep my collection small and tidy. <laughs> so that's just how it is right now. But anyways, thank you so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it and I'll see you very soon with another video. Bye!